Do you feel stressed, overwhelmed? Do you have too much stuff? A messy desk, maybe? Are you embarrassed to have people over? You don't know where to start. You have piles everywhere, too busy of a calendar. You have a crowded closet. You have an endless inbox, digital files all over the place. Does that feel overwhelming to think about? Well, it's time to simplify, so keep on watching. Hey, I'm Hugo and I help busy professionals be more productive and get back in control of their own time. I'm Melissa Chalikel and I streamline processes for disorganized people. I'm so excited to have Melissa back on this channel. So if you think you can benefit from being more productive through decluttering your space and your mind, then this is the channel you may want to subscribe to. So consider subscribing and don't forget to ring the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video twice a week. I'm really happy to have Melissa here. So. Come on, Melissa, give me a <laughs> It's good to be back. <laughs> we filmed a video six months ago. I can't believe it's been that long. I'm actually going to uh, give you uh, the card right here to link to the video. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I think it's this way. <laughs> I think it's this way. So uh, don't forget to click on the video if you want to watch the full interview I did from Melissa six months ago. But like, watch it at the end of the video. Right? Don't, don't, don't leave now. So the funny thing is we were going to do a whole series on minimalism that was going to be about 10 different videos. and. We'll what we decided was in true spirit of minimalism, we're going to siphon it down to just one action-packed video for you. So we're going to talk about decluttering, about minimalism, about decision fatigue, visualizing your home as your sanctuary. So make sure you watch it all the way through because as Melissa said, it's fully packed, fully packed of value. So our goal for you throughout watching this video is to help you to live a more organized life and you can streamline and structure your daily activities and processes in the spirit of minimalism so that you can simplify, downsize, and learn how to better equip yourself for a simplified life. Let's jump right in. So what are we going to talk about? So the first topic. Yeah, today we're going to talk about minimalism. So we're going to be talking about all types of decluttering, everything from your calendar to your closet. So I noticed that we tend to have a lot of difficulties letting go of things that we never use, right? Definitely. It's so important that we purge because a lot of times, especially in our homes and in our offices, there's so much that comes in and not always so much going out. So we just kind of collect and pile things and we have those pack rat tendencies. So it's really important to understand the art of decluttering and see how it can make you feel better and more efficient and like there's more room for new opportunities in your life. So there is this whole trend about minimalism. What's, what's the deal with Minimalism. Yes, it's definitely trending right now and it's the idea that uh, right now in the US specifically we're going through this generational time where we have what's called baby boomers. So back in the 50s and 60s so many babies were born, people were reproducing like crazy and now we have this generation that is downsizing their empty nesters, their kids are going to college, they don't need these big giant houses anymore. And unfortunately, their parents grew up in a time here in America called the Great Depression, which was a very restricted time. It wasn't just a recession, it was truly a depression where there was no money, you held on to everything. If you ate a, a tub of margarine in your house over a course of a few months, you kept the margarine tin that the, you know, the butter or margarine came in, and then you would save that for storage use or for packing other things in it say like washers and nuts in your garage for your tool shed things like that so that same mentality got passed down from those parents in the Great Depression to the baby boomers and now we're experiencing the baby boomers starting to not come to the end of their lives but definitely start to realize they need to downsize because they've had those pack rat tendencies so are you a baby boomer? I would like to know if you are. Let me know in the comment section below and write baby boomer. I want to know who my audience is because the audience has been growing. So I want you know, I want to know who you are behind this camera. So let us know. So what do we do about this having these background tendencies? Like what, what is the tactical thing you can do? Definitely, when you're first starting out on your journey to minimalism, maybe this is a totally foreign concept to you. First of all, observing what's in your space and realizing how much you've actually acquired. Maybe you have over a hundred books, you have a pile of magazines from years ago. It's really just being observant and opening your eyes to the fact that 
you might have acquired a lot more stuff than you realized you had. Usually that comes up when we're moving, right? When we have to actually put everything into boxes, touch every single item, you go, oh my gosh, how did I get so much stuff? I don't know how I got all this off. Exactly, so the first step is observation. The second step, what I want you to do is just take 20 minutes a day and start in non-emotional areas. So I'm not gonna have you go through childhood memories or yearbooks or past divorces or maybe people in your life that have passed away, things like that. Don't touch that stuff yet. That's more advanced level minimalism. This stuff is gonna be like your spice rack in your kitchen or maybe your glove box in your car. Maybe the nightstand, right? Small areas that are bite-sized chunks to help you on your minimalist journey. Okay, so 20 minutes a day for how long usually? Every day, it's like exercising a muscle. So it's like- Every single day I, until the rest of your life? I declutter <laughs> daily, I really do. And if you're, you know, if you're just starting out, that's gonna sound daunting. It's not like you're going to the gym every single day for 30 minutes, seven days a week, working with a trainer. You're not gonna become a bodybuilder overnight, right? It's yeah. that building up to it. And feel free to give yourself a day off or two, but mostly what I notice is that if you tell yourself 20 minutes every day, my clients will stick to that process and not just say, oh, it's Sunday, and then Sunday turns into Monday, and Monday turns into Tuesday, and Tuesday turns into Wednesday. So try to do it every single day. Yeah, so everything on every single day. So baby, if you're watching, we're gonna start that process of decluttering every single day, right? <laughs> Melissa, you're here, you witness. We're gonna do this. <laughs> so we really need it at home. Not that we are hoarders, but I think we would benefit from 20 minutes a day of decluttering. Definitely, and especially when you have children, when you bring a new baby into your life, when you bring children into your life, I work with families in their homes and I see you really just magically like acquire this stuff. It's like yeah. the baby needs 50% more things than you had ever before life with baby. That's true. <laughs> So along with that is this idea of decision fatigue. We are required to make so many decisions throughout the day. Have you ever noticed that when you're getting ready for work in the morning that you look at your closet and you're just like overwhelmed? Yeah, if, if you're very careful about your style and you really want to choose the right things and everything to wear that they match and everything, yeah, of course, that's that can be very, very hard to decide. It's a lot of decisions, like especially for, you know, the work that I know that you do outside of time flies, you know, you might be picking out ties and shirts and belts and cufflinks and suit jackets and the right shoes and maybe the shoes need to be polished and what about the pants? Oh, they need to be ironed and what about the shirt? Oh shoot, it needs to be pressed first. That's a lot of decisions right off the bat first thing in the morning and our brains can only handle so many decisions every single day. Yeah, decision power and willpower both are actually a scare. So you have a lot start to start your day and then it gets diminished, diminished, diminished and at the end of the day you don't have any anymore. Right, so the key to preventing decision fatigue is making sure that you're implementing processes in your life that are keeping you from having to make so many decisions. I love the idea of a capsule wardrobe. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Yeah, actually like Mark Zuckerberg, uh, I think is a good example, but you can touch on that. Exactly, sure. Mark Zuckerberg, you know, you look at these big giant CEOs, they're running billion dollar companies, Steve Jobs, Obama, Mark Zuckerberg. These are guys where you always see them wearing the exact same thing. You know why? Because they don't have to make yet another decision in their day. Exactly. So they keep the decision power for the important stuff. Exactly. And their energy for the important stuff. So another instance of preventing decision fatigue is labeling. So imagine, you know, all those pretty Pinterest pictures of pantries that are perfectly labeled or the garages where everything is streamlined and structured like Kaizen and 5S to the nines, right? And think of how that helps our brain. So labeling really helps us to identify things very quickly. It's not an opaque box that's in your office and you're like, oh my gosh, what files are those? What year is it? What documents are they? It has a label, your brain knows what it is. Less decision to make. Yeah, it helps you find very easily where the things are supposed to be, but also identify if there is any anomaly. Uh, for example, if you have like brown rice and you have like this these, uh, jar with your brown rice, if everything is labeled and everything is uh, very easy to see, you can identify that you're running out very quickly on, on brown rice and you can take the decision to actually go buy more and not waiting to actually running out of brown rice. That's, that's a very practical example example, but I can work also in your professional environment, uh, in your files and everything. Yeah, and digital files too. 
issues. So, you know, as we're getting away from these paper cluttered offices and homes, we're moving more into the digital files. So what do your naming conventions look like? Are you naming things in the same streamlined, automated type of uh, naming structure that you can just go type in a keyword and you find your document? All of your images aren't this IMG one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? They're actually labeled or in the correct folder so you know these are my pictures from France, these are my pictures from Turkey, these are my pictures from my trip to New York, right? And you know exactly where they are and how to find them quickly. Exactly. So just be pragmatic. We don't want you to have like a whole cupboard or all your files that are completely like OCD style. With it, even though if you look at my computer, that looks a little bit like OCD. Same. <laughs> but it just has to serve you, help you. It doesn't have to be like really, really like completely, completely rigorous. But as long as it help you, then then you win it. Exactly. It's whatever works for you. So it's customized to whatever stage you're at. That might sound insane to do color coding and, and naming and this and that. Start with the box of files that you haven't gone through in 10 years, right? Start small, do that 20 minutes a day. Yeah, that's a really, really great tip. Okay, thanks great, Melissa, for, for these uh, great examples on like very physical tips uh, to declutter. But now we're going to talk about more like the mindset and the psychology aspect to it. So ever felt like your life is getting out of control because of clutter or any other things that we already talked about. So if this sounds like you, get ready for the next part of this video. Keep on watching because we're going to do a visualization exercise with Melissa that hopefully will bring a lot of value to you. So Melissa, what else can you share with us? It's definitely a mind game, right? We talked a little bit about the physical side of the actual decluttering, the tactical work, but it starts in here. So clutter is definitely a reflection of our inner state. So if you've ever walked into maybe a hoarder's home or maybe somebody that is a very busy executive or maybe somebody that has four children, their houses probably aren't going to look like what you see on the TV, right? Uh, HGTV or in these fancy magazines or even on Pinterest. They're probably going to look like real homes and real lives of real people that are real busy, right? And that's, you know, that's real life. So what I like to start with is understanding that if there's clutter, that really is a reflection of what's going on in here. So if your mind is cluttered, your space is cluttered, your computer's cluttered, your laptop's covered, cluttered, and your digital files might be cluttered too. So it starts with reflecting on what your inner state looks like. I used to say like, you have a, you have a very messy desk that says a lot about your brain and your mind. And you can say the opposite. If your desk is empty, what does it say about your mind and your brain? And that has to do with creativity too. So a lot of the people that I work with, typically disorganized people are much more on the creative spectrum. So I'm very logical, I imagine you are as well. I'm very much over here. Creative people are like off the charts, give me a messy space, this is how I like to work. That's true. But that's not always efficient and doesn't always move the needle forward to make you productive in your life and your business. Always try to find the sweet spot between your creativity and how your environment serves you for your productivity. For sure. Okay. Now we're going to do a visualization exercise with Melissa. It's going to be in two steps. So grab a piece of paper and or maybe take your notes app in your phone and be ready to take a few notes. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is, it might sound a little out there, but I'd like you to actually close your eyes. We're gonna do a quick visualization here. I want you to imagine your home in your space right now, the way it looks, if you're not there right now, what it looked like when you left this morning. And imagine, again, the day that you got the keys to that place, whether it's an apartment or a condo, townhouse, or home, wherever you live, imagine that day. How excited you were, open with possibilities, new opportunities, a fresh space to be able to live in and nurture your life with and then kind of see the difference between those two feelings. How it feels now versus how it felt then. What were the emotions back then that you were feeling? Were you thrilled and joyful? Were your kids running around excited to see all their rooms? Was your wife maybe, you know, excited about all the cabinet space or closet spaces? Were you thrilled to be able to see the backyard and maybe you have a view? What did those emotions look like to you? So open your eyes, hopefully you close them before. 
open your eyes, pause this video and write it down. Write what it was before and what it is now and try to identify this gap and pause this video. Okay, so we're back. Hopefully you paused the video, you did those exercises. The key to this visualization exercise is realizing the disconnect between the two. How did you go from here, being so thrilled and joyful about your new space, to being here and feeling clogged down and like you're wearing the weight of the world because you have all this stuff. I imagine you feel constricted and restricted and kind of just weighed down, right? How does that difference of that feel? And once we know that, we can set your clear vision for what we want your future to look like. You don't have to live that way. It's actually a good segue to what we call overshop or like what are your thoughts about people that hold like a sentimental, uh, hold on to a sentimental clutter. Definitely, uh, stuff has emotions to it, right? If I ask you to think about the cologne that you wore when you were a sophomore in college, you can probably smell that right away. Our stuff has emotions. Our things tie memories to stuff. So maybe I see a Pepsi can, I think of my grandma because she used to always have a, a can of Pepsi. She hated Coca-Cola, she only drank Pepsi, and she'd always have a Pepsi can. So I'm not gonna go fill my house with Pepsi cans because I wanna think about my grandma, right? And you're not gonna go fill your house with the cologne that you wore in sophomore in college because it brought back happy memories. Mm -hmm. But our stuff definitely has emotions tied to it. Exactly, and I have a trick for that because I have like so many th things that I actually hold on to from from good years in college or like or before. When you have this shirt that you you're never going to wear it again, but it, it holds like so much, so so many good memories. So what I do now is actually I take a picture of that. So because what you want to remember is actually the memory. You don't want to you don't want to shirt itself. You just want a memory. So actually a picture will do the trick. So I I took when I moved to California, I actually took a lot of pictures of all the things and actually got rid of them or gave them away. That's an awesome idea. And clients of mine that have children, we do that a lot with artwork. You know, when you have a kid, especially if you only have one child and you don't have five to keep track of, right? You have one child, every artwork that they bring home from preschool or kindergarten or elementary is so precious, right? Oh, it's his handprint and it's his footprint and it's his first tooth and it's this and that, you know? And by the time the kid is 10, 15, 18, imagine the stuff that's weighing down your life if you were to keep every single thing. So take the picture, load it to your digital file organized area, and move on. So another idea that I wanted to touch on in this video is over shopping. So in America, you know, we're in a wealthier type environment, especially here in San Diego where we're filming this video today. I notice a lot of people just getting caught up in kind of keeping up with the Joneses. Oh, the new iPhone's out. I better go throw away my old one and get the new one. Oh, those shoes are cute and so-and-so said that they're trending this season, so I gotta go buy them. Over shopping is usually coming from ignoring ignoring something that's in here. So back to that mindset piece and the inner work that you need to do to start the decluttering and minimalism process. If you're holding on to this stuff and you're buying this stuff, it's probably because you're filling an emotional void. Yeah. So what I'd like you to ask yourself every time you're at the store, even if you're at the grocery store and you're over shopping at say Costco, right? You're buying all this oh. stuff in bulk. <laughs> uh, is I feel it. <laughs> right, and, and just think of Costco. How much stress does that give you automatically, right? I cannot go to Costco and spend less than 100 bucks. It, it, never happens. No, you can't even walk through there without getting shiny object syndrome, right? So ask yourself as you're holding these items, is this trying to fill an emotional void? Is this something that is to live in the some days or the what ifs? Oh, these pants are so cute, but they're a little tight, but someday I'll fit into them. Or, you know, maybe you're at Costco and you're looking at a brand new espresso machine, but you already have three coffee pots at home. Oh, well, what if we're that fancy family that has people over and we make these nice espressos for people? And you're living in these what ifs and some days and emotional voids. I want you to monitor that as you're shopping so that you can make sure that you're not becoming a shopaholic.
So Melissa shared with us a lot, a lot of information. I hope you found value in it. So you can grab Melissa's free ebook, right? Tell us more about it. Yeah, so I have a free ebook on my website. It's at letsgetyouorganized.biz slash cluttercoaching. We're gonna put the link down below. And you can go in there, you'll get your PDF once you sign up for my email list. And it's 18 pages chock full of organizing tips, minimalism tips, decluttering, there's a clutter to cash guide in there, which is really cool. So how to sell your stuff. So go to let's get you organized up is slash clutter coaching. And if you're not into that idea, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I'm at let's get you organized. Okay. If there is one topic that you would like us to deep dive a little bit more, she wasn't aware of that. But if you want us to bring Melissa back for another video to uh, talk about more specific things about minimalism, let us know in the comments and we'll, bring, we'll force her to come back. I will, I will. I like being here. <laughs> so, and if you like this video, if you think you may uh, get value from more tips on productivity and everything, just, uh, just subscribe to this channel. It's right here, or you can watch more videos. Merci, au revoir.